So uh, good good afternoon, everyone. This is Tony Lanza Fame. We're going to uh, we're going to talk, talk about uh, managing permissions in a multi cloud environment using Microsoft Entrepreneur Permissions Management. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Scott Walton. He's uh, an Entrepreneur Permissions Management Global Black Belt that works with micro works for Microsoft. Uh, so uh, this is uh, something that's uh, uh, you know, very uh, very popular amongst our, our, our customers because uh, so many of our customers have multiple multiple cloud environments, whether it's Azure or uh, or Amazon uh, uh, cloud services. Uh, we well, we've got a solution to help you uh, manage you know simplify management uh, across the, those uh, those those workspaces. So that being said, I'll hand it over to Scott. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, I am Scott Walton. I am, as previously was mentioned, an intra permissions management uh, GBB. So um, some of you have probably, you know, begun your cloud adoption. I think everyone's at a different point in that journey. Um, I started sharing a slide deck for a moment, but I don't see it. Okay, it looks like it just came up. If you guys uh, can't see the slides, please let me know. Um, I'm only going to spend a couple minutes on slides and then jump right into a demo environment, but I wanted to kind of level set things and kind of talk about some of the different perspectives that EPM, Intra Permissions Management, is coming to the problem. Um, so Intra Permissions Management is the product of an acquisition that Microsoft uh, made about a year and a half ago. There was a company called Cloudnox, uh, which was doing uh, permissions management on multiple clouds. So essentially, a lot of the problems that our customers were having was that they were moving very quickly to the cloud. And so when you move to the cloud, you had all of these different identities being created. Some, some people were like, well, where did that identity come from? You know, it was like, that was a managed identity. You decided to set up for that virtual machine or a service principle, or you created a function. You know, there are a lot of things were just popping up in the cloud and people are like, what is that? Where did it come from? What does it do? What permissions have I or someone else given to it? And are those permissions appropriate for it? So what we're kind of helping you to do is untangle that knot and figure out, um, you know, what's out there. So discovery. Uh, the next thing to look at is that a lot of your identities that are in the cloud, they are they are very highly over permissioned. So even for your users, which log in regularly and they do things in the portal, like an administrator or an application user, you will find when you actually look at the analytics that they're using a very, very low percentage of the total permissions they've been granted. And even more concerning is that uh, many of the permissions that are high risk, those things where they can create something they can delete something, they can massively change the configuration of something. Those permissions are also out there in large quantities, and you wanna make sure that you have those accounted for. So that's kind of where we're coming at from the problem. Okay, now the other thing, and I think for many of you who are, you know, I've, I'm a Marine in my other life, um, so I've been in the Marine Corps for over 30 years. I've had a number of different jobs in the Marine Corps. So for many of you who've been in government agencies for a long time, this is probably not the first job or only job that you've ever had um, in that organization. So what we tend to find is that people accumulate permissions. They tend to, um, over time, they go from being, I'm just gonna say like an accounts receivable clerk to being an accounts payable manager to being the general ledger manager, something along those lines where they've they basically moved around in an area, but they've accumulated roles and responsibilities. And so we end up with there is a problem where they've amassed a large amount of permissions, but the permissions they need to perform their job that they're currently performing don't match. We call that a permissions gap. And so what you end up looking at is how many permissions have these identities been granted how many are they actually using and how do we get that back under control? So uh, we give you a capability of kind of discovering that and then going through to decide what the appropriate level of permissions for different roles would look like. And then finally, just kind of discussing this. So, you know, could you do all this manually? Sure you could. Um, you know, today, the way that a lot of organizations do this is they throw humanity at the problem. Um, you know, today, a lot of organizations are like we have IAM, IAM admins who, uh, you know, grant roles and permissions at hopefully at the group level. 
uh, you know, but those tend to not be time bound. Some organizations are beginning to use things like privilege identity management uh, to make sure that people are only doing those admin things as they need to. But a lot of organizations are still experimenting with that and kind of determining where it fits in their organization. Um, we also find that permission cleanup is done manually. So, and most of the time that tends to happen after a serious event has occurred. Uh, the people who tend to be most interested in a product like EPM are customers who have already had a problem. And, and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get left of bang and say, hey, let's, let's preemptively look at these things and figure out what permissions identities need and appropriately manage those. So this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to, you know, look at the activity that a user has and give them the permissions they need. We're also trying to allow for those high risk permissions, but only do it when we actually need to do it and make those time bound. So ideally we're only giving you permission in a brief window when you, we know that you're gonna be performing those functions, or we're also going to try to you know, only elevate you when you when you express a need for them and we approve those those needs. And then finally, we can continuously monitor what you're using and identify whether you need additional permissions, whether you uh, need additional permissions taken away, because both of those things are possible. Um, so what we tend to look at here is, um, you know, even for some of you who may say, hey, I'm using privilege identity management, um, we also tend to find that that even though people are eligible for certain roles, how often are you auditing those roles to make sure that they're really ever elevating into them? Because we tend to find that there's a lot of GA eligible users who remain GA eligible for a long time, but then they never actually do it. So at, at what point in that process do you go back to them and say, hey, I see that you've been on this uh, GA eligibility list for six months or a year, but you've never done it. You know, and many people would be like, well, I might tomorrow. Well, you might, but you know, ask for it when you do it. So that's kind of what we're looking at. So I'm gonna stop sharing this and move into my demo environment. So any questions at this point? Okay. Well, I will start sharing my other screen, which should be very familiar to all of you. It looks like some people are waiting in the lobby, according to my note here. Um, this should be familiar for most of you. This is the Azure portal. Um, you know, as many of you know, this is the place where if you're a an administrator, if you're a cloud administrator, this is where you'd go to monitor who your users are, create resources, look at the health of your subscriptions. Uh, but for our purposes, what we're looking at inside this environment is the Azure Active Directory. So the Azure Active Directory is, you know, that single source of identity and access management from an Azure environment perspective. But what we have in here, and just so you guys know, this is my Woodgrove environment, which is a demonstration environment that we at Microsoft use. That will become a little bit relevant as we kind of step through the data, which is found in here. So what we want to look at is, uh, you know, let's take a look at how many users there are in this environment and how many of those users are actually doing anything in this environment. So here you can see I have a tile inside of the uh, AAD blade called Intra Permissions Management. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna load up my dashboard. And this view that you're seeing here is the legacy CloudNox view where we've integrated a lot of what we've done over the last year inside of um, EPM is we've integrated the, um, the CloudNox identity portal into, um, into what we're doing here. So, so you're kind of getting that common thread through AAD into uh, CloudNox. So what we're able to do here is we're launched into a dashboard. And this dashboard is gonna give me a view of what my subscription in this case is, um, you know, what, how many identities does it have and how are we assessing the identities in terms of what sort of, I'm sorry, uh, in terms of what sort of health we have here. So the, the principal grading that we do here is the PCI, so permission creep index. This is essentially at the environment level, what is the delta that exists between the number of permissions that we've granted users versus what permissions are those users actually employing? And so you can see here that I've given, that the system has given me a grade of 82. 
This is not good, but it's not as bad as it could be. So if it were over here in the deep red, we would have some serious problems to address. Now, just for comparison purposes, I looked a little while ago, I'm gonna jump into my AWS environment. You can see I actually have bigger problems over here in the AWS environment. So, but I'm gonna jump back over into here into Azure and kind of give you a walkthrough of what we're seeing. So the first thing to notice is I have 907 identities in here and the majority of them, 757 identities, are rated as being of high risk. Now, why are they high risk? Well, I can kind of drill down over here and begin to kind of get an idea. Of those 907 users that I have, I have 572 that are just plain inactive. These are permissioned users that exist in my system that have not logged in in the last 90 days. So remember, this is a demonstration environment. So this is an environment that we've created. We give a lot of users access to the system and many of them use it once or twice, but then they don't come back. So if I were an IAM manager, I'd probably be looking at this like, uh, maybe those people don't need access to my system anymore. And if you were to do that, you'd be performing kind of basic cyber hygiene that would then in turn, you know, get rid of some of these. And that would drive your PCI down. Uh, we also see here that we see a few other categories. We have some inactive serverless functions uh, and inactive apps. I refer to this as kind of the cloud debris field. So what we find a lot of times in organizations is we're doing some really powerful things in the cloud. You know, many of you who are kind of like me, you've been in the IT world for a long time, you know, used to be that, you know, building an app started with, you know, going to whoever bought your servers and saying, hey, buy me a server so I can put it in the data center, so I can build the image on it, so I can put it on the network, so I can begin to build my application. There was a lot of work that went in before you actually built the app itself. Well, now, and this is in some cases, this is great, but it also requires some adult supervision, is, you know, now we just go onto the cloud and we just say, build me five VMs, build me a scale set, build me a virtual network, build me a public IP address. And, you know, 30 minutes later, you've got your entire environment stood up. Well, a lot of times, especially when we talk to DevOps, some of these things get abandoned. They get left out there in your cloud environment. And, um, you know, where does someone go back and account for those things later? If you do something like your proper architecture, you're building things like resource groups and you've segmented things and you've tagged them properly. And you know, if you're, if you're that disciplined, you probably don't have this problem. But if you're not that disciplined, you probably need a way to kind of have someone notify you that these things are out there. So what we're able to do here is we see there's a lot of things we can just kind of do some cleanup almost immediately. If I wanna see what those inactive serverless functions look like, I can see what I have here. So I have some that, and, and actually these are, you know, they're, they've been granted some permissions, but as you can see here, they haven't been used. So of the 71 permissions that this app secret auto rotate fund has been given, it hasn't used any of them. So we do give it a PCI, uh, but then some of these right here are actually functions that we've already kind of preemptively removed all the permissions from, and they're waiting to be deleted, but I'll show you that in a little bit. But the idea here is you can begin to do that cyber hygiene where you're kind of pulling those things back. Now, all of that is like, hey, I could run some scripts. I could find those things out for myself. And you're right, you could. Some of the other things you, want, you might want to look at here is the fact that you have some over-provisioned active users. So unlike these users up here who just flat out haven't come into your system, we have some here that are coming into the system that, um, that have way too many permissions based upon what they're doing. And then we also have some super users, which in this environment, and I'll admit, I am one of those 15 super users for the purpose of this demo. Uh, but, you know, should an environment have 15 super users? Eh, you'd probably want to look at it and make a, make a real educated risk-informed decision about whether you need all those people to have super user permissions in your environment. So we're going to drill down here into active users in a moment. But before I jump over there, I wanted to point out these things. So... EPM is not in and of itself a CSPM, a cloud security posture management tool. But as part of our analysis, we go out and we look for, are there pieces of your cloud infrastructure which are potentially misconfigured? Now, you might go, hey, I'm the IAM manager. I don't care about their open network security groups. Well, you don't until you do. I mean, that's probably the bottom line. If someone, if someone compromises that vulnerability, 
uh, to get into your system, it may become a problem that you want to be aware of. But what we also see here is under AWS, we're going to have a lot more of these. So in this case, um, you know, as many of you probably know, um, storage containers, whether they're S3 buckets or Azure storage containers or GCP buckets, those are some of the principal sources of PII breaches um, of other sort of, of, of confidential data on the part of government. And so what we see here is we've determined that we have five S3 buckets in this AWS subscription that are accessible externally. And of those five buckets, four of them are unencrypted. At this point, any of you who use AWS, you're probably like uncomfortable and wiggling around in your chair because you all know that there are security researchers who actively troll looking for exactly this. They look for those unencrypted, publicly accessible S3 buckets because I can pull down some encrypted data. And if I want to expend a whole lot of time and energy, I can maybe decrypt it over time. But if I get unencrypted S3 buckets, that's money today. Yeah, you know, I've got that stuff. I can also see here that I have some EC2 instances that have access to these buckets. And I can also see that I have five open NSGs, which are principally the ways that these are accessible to the internet. So a lot of this is you can see there's a, there's a kill chain that you can kind of see developing here, where if I wanted to, I could begin to kind of look at how do I exploit these S3 buckets, pull that data, use that data, and you'd be surprised what you find in an S3 bucket. Um, you know, sometimes you find things, you know, convenient things like, oh, passwords. You know, hopefully there's nothing like that in these, but we don't know for sure. Now, for those of you who are IAM managers, you're like, hey, this is mildly interesting and somebody should go fix this. If you're a CISO, you're probably picking up the phone and you're calling some people in your organization to tell them to fix it. So what we have here is just kind of an overview of what you can find from a CSPM perspective. And the idea here is if you're going to secure your identities, you also want to secure your resources, those identities touch. Okay. So before I dive into the over-provisioned active users, I wanted to take a knee and ask, are there any questions or any comments at this point? Okay, nothing heard. Okay, so at, what I'm doing now is I'm drilling into, show me who my over-provisioned active identities are. So these are the people who are logging into the system. So remember of those 900 and some odd identities that we have that are contributing to that PCI of 87, I believe it was. Who are the users that I have in here who have a whole bunch of permissions and they're really not using many of them? And um, you know, I can see when those identities were created, and when they were last active. So you can see that even though we say, hey, this is an active user, well, like this user, for example, last logged in September 15th, this one on September 8th. So some of these are actually getting kind of stale also. But what you also see is how privileged these users are. A lot of these users here have a massive number of permissions in the system. And so, but they're using a very, very, very small percentage two out of 12,632. So we rate that user from the permissions creep index perspective of having a PCI of 83. So that PCI score that you see is an aggregate of a lot of different things, but at the user level, we're also giving each one of the users a PCI score. Now, what we do with this is we can say, Hey, let's use Joey as an example. Joey's actually doing pretty well. You know, I actually know Joey. Joey's one of our PMs who maintains this environment. So he comes in here quite a bit. And I will tell you, there's probably no one using as many privileges and permissions in this environment as Joey's using, because Joey's the one who's in here gardening the environment on an almost daily basis. He hasn't been doing it for the past week or so because he's been on vacation but uh, he does do it pretty recently. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at, let's look at what Joey's been doing. So you see here, Joey has a lot of direct roles, uh, but we can also see, you know, from an auditing perspective, what tasks is Joey actually performing? So these are all those different tasks, in this case, under the Azure environment, where I can see what has he been doing in this environment. So well, I'm going to pick one right here. There's a lot of things under this compute container, this compute node, where this is where you're creating and deleting and modifying virtual machines. 
So you can see he's doing a lot of things over here. Uh, and I can also see if I want to, I can figure out exactly when he's been doing it and against which resources he's been doing it and from what IP address he's been doing it. So if you're someone in security, you're looking at this, you're like, man, I got my audit trail now. So this is a lot of what we're trying to give you here is who did what and when then which resources they touched and which resources they're working against and which resources they have active permissions against. So you see here, uh, you know, a lot of kind of the single uh, pane of glass where you can see a lot of the things that are going on here. Now, if I were to look at Joey and say, Joey represents the high watermark of what I want other users to be able to do. Remember, Joey did 95 of the 12,000 permissions. He used those. So now I want to create a role that looks like Joey. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a role that is that is going to only be those 95 tasks plus the read tasks that Joey has performed in the previous three months. So I'm saying, let's give everyone the permissions that Joey has. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down, I'm going to find Joey. And I'll find Joey in a second, I promise. And get close. So Joey, Joey Cruz. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm looking here and you can see I got a few more things that popped up here. Tasks performed in the last 90 days, 60 days. I can basically select which time frame I'm looking at here. And in this case, I can also say, I want to include in this new role that I'm creating all of the read only tasks. So, so what this helps you to do is when somebody goes into the Azure portal, they're still gonna be able to navigate around. They're still gonna be able to see all the things that they want to see and need to see, but they won't have all of the permissions to execute being those high risk permissions. So what you're gonna see here is 95 plus a number of read only tasks. So I'm going to do here is I'm going to say yes, next. Now, look here in the upper left-hand corner. So what you see here is we're, we're, we're working in the Azure environment, as you all know, and you'll see here that we're online, meaning that we have a bi-directional flow established with the Azure environment and that our controller is enabled, meaning I can, push, I can push commands back and forth into the Azure environment from this console. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a role and I'm going to call it Joey underscore right. So it's essentially right sizing Joey's uh, permissions. And what I would do here is I see this is going to be at the subscription scope down here. And I'm going to go ahead and say next. Now, at this point, some of you are like, hey, I don't want some console pushing commands back into my environment. I want to look at that myself. I want to make sure it's good to go. And then I'll decide when I want to execute it. Well, Knowing that that's the case, you can over here download the JSON and the script. But if you want to look at them, you can also see here. Now, notice that what you're able to do here is you see all these read permissions. Because we left that option selected for leaving those read-only permissions, you're going to see a whole bunch of reads in here. But every so often, you're going to see a delete, a write, or a publish action. You see those other things in here, and these are reflective of the permissions that Joey actually did use over the previous 90 days. So what we're able to do here is, like I say, if I wanted to, I could download this JSON that you're looking at right now. I could also download the script file, which would be my command that I would execute in a Cloud Shell window, uh, which would then execute this. But if I want to, I can also just submit it directly from here and then you'll see that this role has been submitted back to Azure and it is kind of created in there. I can go in and I can assign Joey and other users who are like Joey in a group to this role. And then all of those users will be right sized into that permission set. Now, this is not a one time deal because people's roles change over time. So what I can continue to do once I've assessed all these permissions is I can go back in over time and say, are they using more? Are they using less? Are they using the same? Hopefully I get it right. Uh, but you know, we're gonna be able to kind of see those things over time. At that point, I'm gonna begin to see my, my PCI is gonna begin to go down because I will have a lower ratio of permissions granted to permissions used. 
So even if they use a lower percentage, or I'm sorry, a lower, or, or, or let's say the absolute number of tasks executed remains the same, the PCI is still going to go down because the ratio of tasks used to tasks available will be that much lower. So you can see this is kind of a continuous evolution, a continuous improvement that I can perform. Now, some of you are saying, well, that's fine for all the things that I have to do on a day to day basis, but what if I have to elevate myself? Well, for some of you thinking, hey, I use PIM. Sure, you can use PIM. You can elevate that way. But how many of you know how to do the same thing in AWS or GCP? The idea here, once again, is that we can do these things in all of these different environments from a, from a common console. So what I can do here is I can create a, an elevation request. And this elevation request is going to give me either a one-time ASAP provisioned uh, elevation of my permissions, very surgical, um, or I can do a scheduled window where if, say, for example, you want to elevate an identity, some sort of batch job. Say you have a batch job that executes on Saturday night, and you want to say every third week, I need to elevate this identity from 10 p.m. until midnight. Okay, I can set that up in here, and it will automatically provision that identity to elevate and then come back down at those points. So what you're beginning to kind of do here is you're beginning to make identity a more difficult, a harder target for any sort of adversary uh, to approach you and use those things. And you're radically removing those permissions that, you know, based upon what we're seeing, those users most likely will not even notice that you're taking those permissions away from them because they haven't been using them. Okay, so, and for those of you who are more on the management side, you'll care about this. We have a lot of reports already built in. Uh, some of these are like, if I want to be able to show the progress I've made in addressing PCI, if I want to show who has what permissions and keep those reports on hand, I can do those. Um, you'll see here that there's the, the iconography here is for which authorization system, which cloud platform uh, these different reports are relevant to. Uh, we most of these are relevant to all three all three clouds so things like your uh group entitlements your identity permissions uh your permissions analytics report which is kind of the the go-to report for almost everything we do uh those are all you know available for all three platforms however for those of you who do have an aws environment that you use uh one of the things that we've seen that's particular to aws is knowing what roles you have in your environment. So that role audit function, and then also knowing if you allow cross account access. Uh, cross account access is one of those things where it's a very powerful capability in AWS, but it can be misused. It can be, um, it can be compromised. So knowing that you have it is kind of the first key to making sure that it doesn't get compromised in some way. So we throw that out there as well, so you can kind of make sure that you know what's going on in your environment. Um, excuse me, just for a moment, I have to. Okay, so um, now let's look at audits. So one of the questions that's come up from a lot of our customers is, what's going on in my environment? So those reports are great when you want to just kind of keep those in the drawer or in the digital filing cabinet and make sure that you know that you can present what's kind of going on. But then from an auditing perspective, one of the questions we do have from our customers, you know, like, show me what's going on in my platform. So in this case, you see there's a lot of things that are listed here as far as what people have done inside this platform itself and then also in the clouds that are that are going on here. So you can kind of get an idea here. You can also download these things and you can save them if you have a commonly accessed query. Now, a final capability that I will tell y'all is going to be renamed. And for those of you who are like veteran Microsoft customers, you'll know that we have other capabilities called autopilot. Um, autopilot was a capability that Cloudnox was building when we acquired them and um, and what this was, was if you go back and you recall that we had those inactive serverless functions at the beginning, we had customers who were like, hey, I need to go back and look at these identities at some point in time. I don't have time at the moment. Can you just like sweep these things into a corner and make sure they don't have permission to do anything? And then I can deal with them later. And we're like, okay, yeah, we can do that. 
So what we have here is autopilot rules. And what autopilot rules are really good for is when you have those unused applications and you have those unused serverless functions, those basically those pieces of infrastructure, uh, you can, what you can do is you can go through and remove the permission sets from them. No one's using them. Well, now no one can do anything with them. So essentially what we do is we just remove all the permissions from the identity and then we can go back later and figure out um, you know, what to do with those things. So that's a pretty powerful capability. The final thing that I wanted just to stop with briefly is I'm sure there's somebody on this call who works in a SOC. And I'm sure there's somebody in the, on this call who works in a SOC and who probably hates alerts because you get alert fatigue. You know, you end up at that, that point where you get these, these meaningless emails because somebody set up an alert for every time Joey logs in and you're like, I wish somebody would stop sending me that email. Well, so what we have here is we have a variety of, of pre-built analytics. And what we want to do here is we want to be able to uh, give you the building blocks to build the analytics that are most relevant to you. So I'm going to start over here with rule-based analytics. So most of these are common for all three clouds. But I want to I want to basically find out, you know, if someone accesses a resource for the first time or if somebody uses a certain permission uh, for the first time. Where this is most relevant is uh, there are times when you might get an, a warning, like a CISA warning, where it says adversarial TTP is X. And that ever, adversarial TTP says if this actor gets into your network or they attempt to get into your network, they will do this thing. Well, if you know what that thing is, you can build an alert, which will then alert you when that thing occurs on your network. So this is going to be for your identity, uh, identities performing certain uh, permissions. Now, remember, though, that if you've done a good job of right-sizing your identities, you may not see it because none of your identities will be eligible to perform those tasks. So um, you, we can also attempt to, we can also put for your attempted uh, actions as well. So from a statistical anomaly and the thing, you know, some there's probably at least one statistician on here, you know, statistical anomalies only really work once you know what a baseline in your environment looks like. So before I can tell you that a, your identity is performing a high or low number of tasks, I have to know what a normal number of tasks looks like. So once you have your uh, baseline established, we can set up things like this. Um, you know, when, notify me when an identity performs a high or a low number of tasks. Identity performs tasks with unusual patterns. You know, once again, this is unusual for them. Unusual results, unusual timing, unusual types. If all of a sudden somebody's doing something that is just completely out of character for them, you may want to be notified about that. So, but once again, we give you the building block here. You can decide to deploy those. And then finally, under permissions analytics, uh, this is where we're going to get much more platform specific. So this is going to be, if you recall, going back to that dashboard, you'll see some, some similar headings here. Um, so what I want to be notified of is under the AWS heading is the same inactive users, groups, resources, roles, serverless functions. If I have over provisioned active roles, I can notify on that. Now, I probably don't want to be rolled out of bed at two o'clock in the morning to find out that somebody's an over permissioned active user. I can deal with that during my working hours. Uh, that's the sort of thing where I could see that on my dashboard and I could do that. But if you have a situation in your environment where you want to be notified of those things because you have a significant reason for uh, setting up your system that way, we offer that to you. There is one that I probably would want to set up. And once we go back and we figure out how many super users I actually do need to have, I can set up an alert if a new super user appears on my system. Because if I have that set at a relatively low number, let's say five or fewer, if all of a sudden a sixth or a seventh super user pops up on my system, that may be the sort of thing where I do want to, you know, somebody to wake me up at midnight uh, and let me know those things. So what you see here, we, we offer all this to you where you can set up these alerts and um, and set them up to notify you. Okay, so um, you know, kind of the the bottom line. It's about almost 40 after the hour. I wanted to save some time for comments, questions, any sort of conversations y'all want to have. Um, 
you know, this is EPM. So EPM is part of our overall zero trust strategy to enable true least privilege access. It's really about being able to kind of surgically look at what your identities are actually doing and give you a mechanism to truly right size those roles where users can still perform their, their ordinary functions and they have a means for requesting elevation as needed, but they're operating in a much lower uh, permission state than what we traditionally have given them. Okay, so any comments, questions, or follow-ups? Hey, Scott, so I'll start off. So um, a lot of our customers on the call have uh, Azure government uh, mm -hmm. spaces. Uh, so what, what are the, uh, what's the, what's the restrictions or timeline on, uh, on support for that space? Right, so, so right now uh, we do not have GCC high support. Uh, for those customers that are using GCC moderate, uh, I'm actually looking for, you know, some possible customers who want to work with me if they, especially if they have commercial resources deployed in their, um, in their Azure commercial subscriptions or AWS commercial subscriptions. Um, I can work with them on that, but our timeline is we're looking at the next year or so getting the product through the FedRAMP process so that we can have a true offering at the FedRAMP high and hopefully also, you know, at the at the the more highly classified levels as well. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So we do have a lot of customers that have Azure Commercial, so this, mm -hmm. this still could be a good fit for them. Right. Uh, how, how is it? Um, how is it licensed? Okay. Yeah. So so one thing. Um, let me show you this. So on the licensing side, we license using a different metric than almost all other Microsoft products. We call it the resource model. So when you onboard a subscription, one of the first things we do as part of the permissions analytics is we go out and we look at what's inside this subscription. So you'll see these are all the things inside this subscription that we were able to find. Network watchers, virtual network gateways, NSGs, uh, virtual machines over here. So a number of resources were located in here. From the licensing perspective, we only license those things that have a compute capability. And the list price for that is $125 per resource per year. But the only things that are, are subject to that are virtual machines, functions, compute containers, which are of these types right here that you see, and databases. So even though this environment is relatively large, uh, you know, as, as an example, you'll see the total number of licenses in the environment I was just showing you is 62. Um, so, but that's kind of, it's, 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 uh, licensed at the resource level and it's resources per year. Thank you. 